Welcome to the Welsh Woodman Workshop and in tonight's project I'll be wood turning this giant piece of conifer tree with a lot of rot in the middle into an ornamental garden mushroom. So this is going to be for a really good friend of mine, he's always helping me out with moving heavy blocks of wood and smaller projects so I'm going to make this as a thank you to him. So I really hope you enjoy tonight's project and remember to click the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. So starting off with this big piece of conifer, it was too heavy for me to really lift on the lathe so I'm just doing a little bit of chainsaw carving, chamfering the top off and that's just going to make it lighter for me to lift up and reduce my labour as well in terms of the, the turning. So it's a little bit too chunky uh, so what I decided to do is to turn it on its side and cut it in half and that's just going to give me my top of the mushroom and a base I can attach the mushroom to as well. So whenever we're starting off with a big piece we always want to start the machine really slow and as we turn the machine on we want to be standing out of the way. Okay, this is going to be a challenge. <laughs> so I'm going to put my uh, protective equipment on. And to help me turn this, I've extended my wood in and gouges handle just with a bit of PVC pipe. And that just gives you a little bit more um, sort of swarf as you come to turn things away. Very slow to begin with. As this is more balanced, we can increase the speed slightly. So I'm aiming to get this all sort of flat and blended. You can see how bad this tree is in terms of the rot there. It's quite dry as well and we're turning against end grain which makes this a little bit of a nightmare to turn. And this is the reason this tree was taken down because of this rot patch, patch there. And I've definitely got a secure enough hold on this with the, the speed we're going so we're just going to go nice and gently with this taking down the, the edges until we can get this more into the round blended in. So there's a little bit of a different technique to turning larger pieces, you have to go slower. I'm looking along this section with my eye rather than the, the cutting tool and I can actually see how my cut progresses then through the piece. Now our flute, so this, the centre of the, the gouge there, that milled out section, it's like an accelerator. So as I'm pushing forward I can either decide to open the flute like this or I can decide to close the flute which is going to increase the sort of the, the amount of material we're taking away. Now I always want to be rubbing on the, the bevel there as that's going to give me a smoother cut eventually. So as this is out of balance I'm cutting air log a lot of the time and that's when we get that little chattering sort of noise. That. And because we're turning end grain Essentially we're slicing against the, the end of the fibres rather than the side of the fibres. That's why we're getting these um, sawdusty sort of bits coming off rather than these long thin lovely shavings you get from the, the side grain. Okay I'm starting to overreach the tool rest quite a bit now so I need to probably move the tool post. So this is the profile before sanding, it's quite, quite cool this, um, so it's a little bit thick on the edge, what I'm going to do is work from the back of the piece and do a slight undercut rather than flipping the piece around and that's another advantage of this machine you can work from the back and then I'm going to start sanding this up, put a nice sort of uh, finish on there, suitable for the outdoors, so I think eventually I'll go with like a, a yacht varnish or something over the top. So the tool's taking a bit of a battering obviously with the unbalanced outside so a little bit blunt. So I'm just going to use one of my homemade sharpening jigs to sharpen this guy up. So I'll show you how this works. I've got a, a video more in depth on how I do this but I set the bowl gouge essentially to a two inch little gap. That's nice and solid in there and I've got a little gauge that I set to the correct side each time with this little jig. Put them on there, there's a little hole this slots into and I can then do my Celtic grind. Uh, 
So you see a, a consistent bevel throughout, razor cutting edge on the top. So that should be good for cutting the other side now. So you can see the difference in cutting side grain. So what I'm doing is I'm moving the gouge in, closing the flute, so I'm actually cutting on the side grains rather than the end grain. And that's what's giving me that long, thin, stringy shavings coming off the piece, which makes it easier for me to cut. And the fact that I haven't got the rot in this piece at the moment makes it a, a heck of a lot easier to turn as well. So we've got it all sort of hollowed out on the inside into the centre and coming coming out this. That's going to be the obviously with a mushroom stem attached. So I know what diameter I'm going to need to do my stem now because it's a little tiny bit over the, the face plate size. But nice shape overall. We haven't started sanding yet so we're going to sand. And just to make sanding a little bit easier for me, I'm going to be using a, a palm sander because this is so large to sand through the grits on this as this is turned off because of the rot and then we'll come back after that to apply a finish. So I've just put a good coat of Danish oil over the top of this. We will eventually put a sort of yacht varnish over the top but sort of let that Danish oil soak in so it gives you an idea of what this will look like but like a matte version of it rather than shiny. It's just going to remove the face plate now so you can see the inside of the mushroom. So I've got the base and I've just chainsawed the uh, chainsaw car off the bottom. It's a little bit of a chamfer on there as well. And I came across this lovely piece of sycamore I've had knocking around for a long while. So I was going to wood turn the, the stem, but I, I quite like how rustic this piece looks. So we're going to use that as the, the stem itself. So I'm going to drill some holes all the way through and attach some big wood chunky screws underneath into this. And we'll do the same for the top. So we're just going to trace around this, find the bottom. And we can whack a few screws through then. Ooh, heavy. And what I'll do is I'll countersink them then from the other side. So I just added some Gorilla Glue to the end. A lot of it's end grain, so a lot of it will soak in, but hopefully it'll give it a little bit of structural support. So I've just drawn around the top of the, the mushroom. I was originally going to turn this into shape, but I'm just going to do a little bit of chainsaw carving in cutting the profile to what I want. So thank you so much for watching. All we've got left to do now is put a few more coats of polyurethane exterior varnish onto this and this should be good to, to go for a good few years. So I'm going to give this to my friend just down the road as a thank you for all the help he's given me over the years with moving heavy bits of wood and other projects. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've really enjoyed tonight's project and taken some inspiration from it. If you have, remember to click the subscribe button down below as that's really going to help me get more videos like this your way. Take care. Dolchenvaur. Norstar.